You're listening to What It's Like With Luz, a podcast highlighting ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Lucy Norris, and on today's episode, I'm speaking with the founder of The Human Entrepreneur, a network empowering young entrepreneurs with the skills to achieve their ambitions. Born and raised in Mumbai, this week's guest struggled to find his passion. Growing up, he tried numerous roles within the corporate world until he finally decided it wasn't for him. Stumbling across entrepreneurship, he furthered his interest in the subject by enrolling in university to complete a course based on it. Whilst there, he began to battle with a new challenge, social isolation and anxiety. Already living with OCD, he found finding his feet a little more challenging than expected, and so his next business idea came to mind to solve the problem. Talking us through the whole journey, here's what it's like to be Varun Balsara. Welcome, Varun. Thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me today. Um, I think it would be a good starting point if we could go all the way back to um, while you were growing up and discuss a little bit about what it was about your upbringing or your childhood in general that was the driving force behind you wanting to become an entrepreneur. That's a great question. Firstly, thank you so much, Lucy. It's, it's great to be here. Um, it's a very interesting question and something that I've uh, only begun exploring in the last couple of months, thanks to lockdown. <laughs> but uh, so it starts off with uh, me being in like primary school. I had no idea what I wanted to really do right up until um, I think grade 12. Um, I finished my international baccalaureate diploma and then I realized that, you know what, I'm not going to go to university and uh, study something that I don't really like. And before then, you know, I was really good at economics. I did really well with that subject. So I said, you know, I'll probably take up economics. Um, Thank God for that. I didn't. I took a gap year um, and things changed quite drastically from there. So all up until 12th grade, you know, I I had seen the glamour behind uh, entrepreneurship. I had seen uh, people on Forbes magazine and I'd seen all these CEOs and I was like, wow, I want to be there. Um, and I realized that over time, of course, uh, that's not the pursuit that I'm going for right now. But I realized there was this, there was a sort of like inclination for being a leader, trying to create that change, but I never really understood it. And over time with my gap year, I realized a lot of things. The first thing I realized was I did a lot of internships and most of the internships that I did, I personally did not find appealing. Um, and one, one way in which I look at it, or, you know, people around me said, you know, don't get disheartened because this this is the way, you know, what you don't like doing. And eventually when I, when I realized that I said, maybe just maybe the corporate world may not be for me. So I said, okay, what are my options? Aha, entrepreneurship. Now, do I have the skills? Maybe, maybe not. Do I know how to lead a team? Maybe, maybe not. And eventually I realized that, you know what, my calling is probably to start something of my own. Uh, and it was quite evident considering the fact that I had leadership positions in high school with being a head boy or starting my own TEDx conference in school, which was the first of its kind, stuff like that. Just, you know, it was, it was these hints. And then as soon as I went to university, um, and actually quite before that, I realized that mental health and, uh, the idea of entrepreneurship in general, um, has not been explored as per the way I thought it should be explored. Um, and through all of that, I realized, and, and I had a lot of interesting experiences during my gap year. One of them was uh, going on a retreat to an ashram, which is an ashram is basically, um, it's kind of like a place where, you know, you sort of reflect, go back, you volunteer your time. Uh, I had experiences with a lot of these type of things, which I would say are quite extraordinary because they, they give you a very different perspective on life. And I realized that one of the biggest things that I would probably do, at the, the way I'd view failure is by not pursuing my passion. And I said, if I'm using that rhetoric in life, let me go ahead and take this to the next step. And I said, okay, you know what? I think my calling is being an entrepreneur. And then as soon as I went to university, the first opportunity I got, I grabbed it. And I realized that it was a problem that I was suffering greatly, which was social isolation, social anxiety. And I said, I'm going to solve this problem. And that was the birth of Connect Us. And And what, sorry to get across you. And what was the driving force behind you then wanting to go to university after you were kind of so um, 
you decided so against it and you decided that you wanted to take the path of being an entrepreneur. Why did you then choose to go to Warwick Business School? It's interesting because initially, you know, um, I think it'll be interesting to look at the cultural context as well. So I'm currently speaking from India. I've been born and raised in Mumbai. Um, education for us here plays a very, very key role. Um, and um, I'm sure for many other cultures it does as well. So um, you're probably relating to this. Um, so it's it's convention to go to school, get a degree, and then you get a job. Um, and I realized that I probably don't want that. But I also realized that I probably don't have the idea yet. And in hindsight, if I didn't go to Warwick, Connect Us or the human entrepreneur would never have even come about. Um, the, the chances of coming about were, were highly unlikely. So while I decided that, you know, the calling was entrepreneurship. I, I, I did decide that I don't personally have the skills and the course that I came across, I mean, thanks to the universe and, you know, my, my, my dad and I were like scrolling through courses. And uh, one of the courses that came up was obviously management, which was a conventional style of learning business. And then there was a really, really interesting course called digital innovation and entrepreneurship. And it was like, wow. So you're basically teaching me what I really want to learn. And I was like, there's no way I'm not getting a degree in that. Cause Hey, first case situation, Worst case, so there's plan B, supposing everything goes to fail and I have to get you know, a job or whatever, work in a corporate world. That degree is pretty solid because it's, it's teaching you digital innovation, which now post COVID, everything's going digital, uh, very, very, um, very, very applicable. And it's also teaching me entrepreneurship, which is something I'm really passionate about. And I think both of them together allowed me to say, you know what, university might not be that bad in terms of just learning. And I don't think I've made a mistake by you know going down that route and taking that time out, uh, studying the course and simultaneously pursuing the, the the passions that I have. Yeah, I think you definitely picked um, a very good course to do, especially considering the circumstances like you just mentioned there. Um, but I'd be interested to know, um, in terms of building a context to speak about Connect Us, um, what the experience was like for you moving from Mumbai to um, Warwick initially and what was it that led you to coming up with the idea for Connect Us and, but also needing to create that space so that you could also help yourself whilst helping other people? Yeah, um, this is again an interesting question because when I, as an international student, what I decided to do is, you know, I said, why not explore different cultures? So quite early on, I decided that you know, while, while there might be Indian societies and there might be a lot of Indians, and while I do have a lot of Indian friends there, I also decided that I want to challenge myself and push myself to go beyond my culture because it's easy to stick with your culture and feel at home. But I think the world is changing and the world's becoming so much more closer that I said, I want to I wanna challenge myself and go outside of my cultural boundaries. Um, and so inevitably when you when I challenged myself to do that, I felt a little out of place. I wouldn't say it was a culture shock, but I, I did have experiences where I realized that I couldn't connect with many people. Um, and one of the things I realized surrounding me, and I'm not generalizing this, of course, is people started making like friendships, relationships, connections with people. Oh, no, I, I would perceive it as a quite a superficial level, wherein you're chatting with people, but it's solely for the purpose of socializing or for going out and then you're getting drunk and then going to um, a club or a pub. And to me, that, that didn't seem very appealing. And eventually I realized that there's probably something more to it. Because when I say, when I consider someone my friend, I, I consider them a friend. When I say I call someone a friend, it's, it's with a lot of love. It's with a lot of compassion. It's with, it's, it's with this utmost care. So the next time I'm in trouble, I know that I can reach out to you if you're my friend. And I realized that that wasn't happening. And I said, wait, is that only me? And I realized that slowly, many people started facing the same thing. Many people will not admit it openly, but when you start asking them the questions or you're probably having um, a, a coffee with them or you're probably having a lunch or a dinner, people start opening up. And what I realized was this, it's, it's a very common thing to be socially isolated. It's very common to be socially anxious. And there's a huge stigma attached to that, which is why I said, if I'm facing that problem and if so many others are facing that same problem, why not do something about it? And that's the whole idea behind Connect Us. And that was when I realized that 
you know, technology and digital innovation, all that I'm studying can definitely be applied to different contexts and connect us with just one of them. Yeah, that's really interesting to hear you speak about that um, because having lived away for college as well um, and being a semi-international student, I was going from Dublin to to the UK, so it's not too big of a jump, but um, I definitely noticed so much of that around me, exactly what you were um, experiencing. So that's really interesting to hear your take on that. Um, and then, so once you had the idea for Connect Us, you knew that you wanted to do something around um, that area and fix a problem that you'd encountered. How did you begin to get it off the ground and, and take your idea from, I guess, your head to, to an actual thing? Yeah, so it, it started out as an idea. I started doing those typical research questions. Uh, I soon realized that people did not really respond much to the surveys. So then I went out and spoke at every possible opportunity. I got open mics. Um, lecture shout outs, uh, different kinds of things, um, put it on every possible group I could get my hands on, on Facebook, you know, those typical university groups. Um, few people showed interest. That's how the team grew. Uh, one thing led to the next, we started applying for funding, you know, because I'm an international student, so I couldn't really register a company or, or a NGO or any of that sort of thing. So I had to rely solely on funding from university and University of Warwick was really supportive there. Warwick uh, Enterprise has been the most supportive, uh, you know, uh, part of Warwick for my ventures at least. And they, with mentorship, with uh, with support from uh, in terms of funding, all of that was really well taken care of. So you know, obviously there were initial failures; people didn't buy into the idea. Um, there were initial glitches, but then I think you sell the passion, you sell the you sell the vision, and eventually the right people come. And if the right people don't, then obviously there's natural selection that takes place and uh, they are eliminated or you decide that it's not best uh, to, you know, uh, continue on with the, with, with them being in Connect Us, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually you form a team, you, you build a prototype, um, the basic MVP, uh, you test it out, you see what's happening um, and you go on to then uh, making changes along the way. A uh, very basic version was literally a, a, a doc. I think it was a Google Forms. And then um, there was a script written at the back that just you know uses the algorithm to match people. Um, and then that converted into a website once we got the funding from university. And then we started hosting events. We started uh, helping people. So currently we've helped hundreds of people on campus you know, create meaningful connections. Obviously some stronger than others. But uh, yeah, that's the small way in which we have impacted uh, or hopefully impacted the lives of uh, several university students and hopefully made them feel a lot less anxious, at least than I was, because the thing that drove me was I don't want anyone to feel the same way that I did uh, in my first year at university. The other thing I'd be interested to know from you is the experience you had or how you found the experience of balancing being a full-time student and um, trying to found a company? Yeah, I think it's, it's very hard. Um, and a short answer is a lack of a social life, basically. Um, and that's okay. Um, I knew what was coming. I wasn't getting into it uh, without knowing all that was <laughs> going to come. So uh, mentally, I was prepared for that. And plus, I didn't have many friends at the time as well. So it worked out brilliantly because then I kept myself very occupied. And like, you know, first year is not much pressure. My grades didn't really matter uh, in my first year. Um, so it all worked out that way. But yeah, the, the balance is really hard. And I think one of the things that really helps is having a very core group of friends that will be there with you no matter what. There have been nights where I used to, I was so frustrated, scared and anxious because you know, I suffer an anxiety disorder called obsessive compulsive disorder. And my thoughts get the better of me sometimes. And, you know, when you get into those spirals and when you start getting those panic attacks, it's mad crazy. Um, and it's a very uncomfortable feeling. And I think the one thing that pulled me out of most of it was was my very, very tight knit friend circle that I call, I don't even think friends like, um, it describes it enough. I think they're, they're more like family to me. And I'm not saying that you need to have tons of them. I'm just saying you need to have three to five of them, or it'd be nice to have at least two to five of them. Uh, that was actually the founding reason why, you know, in Connect Us, we keep the groups very small. So hopefully we can find those two to five people. But anyway, those two to five people, you know, these are the people that come in times of need. And uh, 
the other thing is your team um how how well you build your team and how close you are to your team because in times where like this it it's hard because you're dealing with so much of pressure from your venture but then you're also dealing with the grades and the assignments and the the countless nights where you have to just keep studying and deliver assignments because you still want a good or a decent grade it's not easy and there were times where i should just cry uh, out of frustration i just used to feel so lost but during those times you know mentorship uh, resources available and um, in the correct information is something that i genuinely you know had the privilege of uh, getting in touch with i think many of the time student entrepreneurs may not have that opportunity which is why um, this actually created the inception of the human entrepreneur where i founded it with my co-host luke nethercliff where you know we both realized that we've had really great opportunities and great mentors but other people might not have and that was actually the inception of the podcast and now what we're planning to do with the human entrepreneur as well and what do you i guess what do you want to see happen with at both connect us and the human entrepreneur do you have a slight five year plan or what's what's the big vision for both of these ventures that you're running at the moment so with with connect us i think it it's serving a very interesting uh it's solving a very interesting need uh in 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 school communities um and we have you know we're now part of uh, enactus uh enactus warwick um and you know we've become an established uh, you know sort of like a community within uh, within boric and i think um i don't see any plans of monetizing uh, a project of this sorts because it's genuinely helping people and it's it's creating positive change within boric so i i really i really like that and i hope that it continues um far more of the, far beyond uh, my graduation and uh, my team's graduation i i hope it just you know stays on as a legacy that that boric can you know step into and if it if 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 that means that it it expands into different universities then then great so be it um uh, for the human entrepreneur i believe that um you know for me personally i feel like i'm i'm on this i'm on this mission to actually understand the condition of human entrepreneurship what does it mean to be a human entrepreneur and i want to try and empower the next generation of student entrepreneurs so what i mean by that is i think um we realized that like with when my co-founder and i came together with the human entrepreneur we realized that a lot of things that need to be done for an entrepreneurial community you know when it comes to content creation specifically there are so many courses that teach you the hard skills but i don't see any courses or at least the amount of courses proportional to the hard course, the the hard skill courses teaching you the soft skills like why can't we teach entrepreneurs how to listen how to communicate effectively how to create teams that last how to create um, sort of partnerships that last how do you how do you distinguish between value and growth and how do you create sustainable impact rather than chasing the figures and the numbers what does it mean to be a human entrepreneur what does it mean to not have hustle within your dictionary but still be able to succeed and what does it mean to live a fulfilling life as an entrepreneur why is in all of that taught right because we have all these courses that teach coding they teach how to build a business but in a more in a more physical sense which i feel like can be understood can be learned of course that's a great thing that they're doing it but i also feel like it needs to be complemented with the softer side of things so that's one of the biggest things that we at the human entrepreneur are trying to you know create um the second thing we're trying to create is you know getting in relation to mentors there are, there's so many scandals that i've heard that make me so upset and sad to see that founders were promised mentors and founders were promised like x amount of funding and they had to pay this huge hefty fee to this this intermediating body and suddenly that intermediating body vanishes and they lose hundreds of pounds uh, and it's just so demotivating and these scandals really made me sad so how do you the, the question then is how do you create effective mentorship and then i guess the third question and the third friction that we realize is if that's so what does it mean to start a company as a as a student what are the things you need practical advice in terms of lawyers in terms of law advice in terms of financial advice you can't really hire a lawyer because that's it's quite expensive and you don't really have that kind of money as a student so what do how do we solve those problems and when we start thinking about it, we realize that human entrepreneurship encompasses all of this 
and which is why then we started with the human entrepreneur so currently it's the podcast and now we're building a community our goal is to be one of the one of the biggest and most engaged communities of student entrepreneurship around the world well it sounds like you definitely have um a busy few years ahead of you but i love the work that you're doing um i think it's so important as well to provide that um network of people um that people can easily tap into and and it takes away some of the stress of it um the other aspect i think of being a young entrepreneur is um the stereotypical chasing of success i guess and the pressures mm. on being an overnight success and and mm. having that success be um displayed in you know things having a ferrari at 23 or whatever it is um so i'd be interested to know what your personal definition of success is yeah 100% i feel like um my definition of, i mean of success personally uh, has changed over the years and um don't hold me accountable if this changes in the next coming few years but <laughs> i think it's a very um for me at least i've i've learned through my experiences and i think experiences change your definitions you know currently uh, not being too philosophical but my definition of success here is i think freedom freedom with regards to the work i do uh, spirituality wise uh, financially uh, etc etc but at the same time honing that balance of being free but at the same time also being able to create a positive and sustainable impact in the communities i'm interacting with uh, and you know how do you scale that impact to probably the rest of the world or similar type of communities around the world and in so doing hopefully leave a legacy but then i just have one more question for you um today and then i'm going to let you go um if i put your 10 year old self in front of you now having been through everything you've been through both in your life and in founding your two companies um what's the biggest piece of advice you'd give that 10 year old self moving forward in life so is it specific to entrepreneurship or just in just in life gener- general life advice or both whatever <laughs> I think if if it's entrepreneurship related um and obviously for anyone listening uh, and these are purely my opinions so feel free to disagree but one of the things is don't don't get a team too quickly learn to do the groundwork yourself and don't hire people or don't like get people on board just because you're afraid of doing that work or afraid of taking that jump on your own and don't think that more people in a team equals more success equals more productivity equals uh, greater things too many cooks can spoil the broth mm-hmm. and uh, other thing is i mean this is this is life advice as well as business advice um, in life i would say choose your partner really carefully i'm saying the same thing for business as well choose your co-founders really carefully your co-founder really carefully if you want one of course um, i think you need to be very compatible um, there is a difference between compatibility and chemistry um the next thing would be start 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 like stop stop waiting around for the perfect moment it's not coming uh, it's probably gone long back yeah <laughs> uh, you're you're in you're in a you're in a situation right now that's really nice it's uh, i'm not i'm not trying to be uh, i'm not trying to be the overly optimistic guy here, but uh, you know think about it like when is the last time you've been locked up in your house or in lockdown vol- you're not going to do that voluntarily not at least most people will not do that voluntarily you're being forced to do that take it as a sign one other thing that i i would you know if if i would want to tell my 10 year old self anything it would be learn to love what you do so much that the hours don't matter i see like there's this huge um perception in the media of this hustle culture and i personally i don't know i i don't resonate with it as much cuz I've been part of that rhetoric for a very long time and over time I realized that it's caused me more damage than good. Yeah, 100%. Couldn't agree with you more. I think those are really sound pieces of advice. Um and I just want to say thank you so so much for coming on and chatting with me today and um sharing your story and your insights. It's been so interesting. Um so thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you so much Lucy. It's been an absolute pleasure recording with you as well and really good job on the podcast. Really appreciate the work you do and keep going really really like it thank you so much for listening and as always please rate share and leave a comment if you like what you hear and don't forget to follow at what it's like pod on instagram and facebook to find out more about varun and the human entrepreneur visit the links provided in the show notes
I'll be back on Thursday with more inspiring stories. But for now, this has been What It's Like with Moose.